Hi guys and welcome to Learn Extra Live. It's a bit different today. It is now grade 12 accounting and I've got Ashraf Patel standing next to me, the famous. Yes. How are no, you, sir? I'm fine, thanks. And how are you? I'm so good today. And I know that the mindsets have been asking for accounting for a very long time, so we've actually listened to them. That's great. And this is the first grade 12 accounting lesson of the year. Brilliant. I'm proud to be here and happy to be here. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, tell, what are we going over today? Today we're going over a section called Bank Reconciliation Statements. Ah, bank Reconciliation Statements. Guys, I've got a feeling we're going to learn a lot today. Kay. We're going to learn about moolah today. Yes, that's what <laughs> I want to learn, how to make lots of money. Money, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so go ahead, take a spot okay. by the board and I'll tell the mindsetters what they need to know for Thank today. Thank you. Okay, so guys, don't forget to join us on facebook.com forward slash learn extra. You can also chat to me, Indy, on Twitter at learn extra. I'm here to help you with all of those burning questions that you may have. I will send them over to Ashraf and we will get to them in the last parts of the show. Also, on a good and a very exciting note, if you've been following all of the ads, you might have seen you know, auditions one and two and three episodes of us trying to look for a new social media presenter here on the show. We're actually trying to look for a few. So what we're going to be doing is during the show, this show, grade 12, I will be posting our top 15 um, auditions, and then it's up to you guys to choose the top 10. Also, before I pass it over, it's very, very important. Guys, we are going through supplementary exam revision. It started on the 28th. It's every morning. Please tune in for all of you guys rewriting on the 11th of February. It, we are here to help you and get you through those exams. Plain sailing. So now, let's get to grades 12 accounting. Very excited. Asha, take it away. Hi, guys. Yes. Remember, what does Ashraf say? Don't fear. When Ashraf is near. Yes. <laughs> okay, guys, so what are we doing in today's lesson? In today's lesson, we're looking at the bank reconciliation statement. In other words, what is there that you need to know to make sure that you are able to answer any question on the bank reconciliation statement? Here goes. Obviously, we will consider the reasons for the differences. In other words, what is causing a difference between our bank account and the bank statement that we are receiving from the bank? Understand this, grade 12s, that when you receive your bank statement from the bank, they have kept an account which shows them the transactions that you have entered into with the bank. Ideally, your records must be the same as the records of the bank. So we are going to look at the reasons for the differences. Okay, now, when we look at the procedures for reconciliation, we're going to take you through what is it that needs to be done. So in that way, you will see exactly that this is the procedure. Very often you find in accounting that learners know what to do. But when it comes to the actual procedure, that is where they fall short. And as a result, they have a, bit of a, a bigger challenge than others. Then we're going to look at the bank reconciliation statement in its entirety. That means what will you put into your bank reconciliation statement? And then obviously, now understand this. And very often you find people saying that, when do I have to learn about internal auditing? When do I have to learn about internal control? The, these sections, internal auditing, internal control, form an integral part of every section in the curriculum. So it's not something that's, that's taught in isolation. What needs to happen, it, you will see now how we will bring it in into the section on the bank reconciliation statement. Okie dokie. What did we say about the bank reconciliation statement? Remember we said that both the business, both the business and the bank, what do they do? They keep a record of the transactions that they have entered into. How do we know? what records the bank has kept. Surely, guys, at the end of the month, 
we're going to receive our bank statement. That's the one we're receiving. And this is then compared with our cash journals. Got that? So keep that in mind as the background. Now definitely, you're going to find differences. The word reconcile, I'm sure may have applied in your lives at some times when you were a bit um, not too good with your boyfriend or girlfriend and then you had to reconcile. Okay, so that's what accounting teaches you as well. So you see, accounting is a life skill and it teaches you how to behave in certain instances. So this, guys, means we now have to find the reasons for the differences. Remember, you can only reconcile something if you know what the difference is. And the word reconcile means to bring together. Okay. So now, the first one we'll be dealing with is your bank charges. Understand that in today's time, this forms a very important cost to businesses. So what happens is, when you receive your bank statement, you determine what were your bank charges, and as a result of that, you will now enter these bank charges into your cash payments journal. In other words, you're updating your cash payments journal. Why? The bank has recorded it in their books. You now need to update your records. Interest on overdraft. The question arises, why do we keep it separate from bank charges? A very important question. Remember, grade 12s, that when you are drawing up your income statement, which we will do, I'm sure, in later shows, you will always find that interest is always kept as a separate item. Now, always have an inquiring mind. Why is that? The reason? Because interest on in overdraft is not an operating expense. Interest on overdraft, guys, is a financing expense and as a result needs to be shown separately. Keep that always in the back of your minds. So enter into your cash payments journal as well. Interest on current account, this is when we are receiving interest. Obviously, you're going to enter it into your cash receipts journal. What about a dishonored check? Remember, a dishonored check is a check that we have received and you hear people saying the check has bounced, meaning that the person who had given you the check does not have sufficient money in the account to honor the check. Remember, guys, that's not the only reason. There may be an error on the check. There may be two signatories required and only one person signed it. Whatever the reason is, a dishonored check we will enter into our cash payments journal. Direct deposits. Yes, we're living in a technological age. You find that because of safety reasons, people sometimes feel that instead of walking with money to go and buy something or to go and pay for something, what they do is they make a direct deposit. We often refer to this one as an EFT. And it's very, very common these days. What is that? An electronic fund transfer. That means from the comfort of your home, you can sit on your laptop and you can pay your accounts. Watch, guys. This is becoming the in thing these days. And how does it affect the bank recon? You as a business will only come to know about the EFT when you have received your bank statement. So, monies that you have received will go into your cash receipts journal, and monies that you have paid out would go into your cash payments journal. So, what's the procedure? What do we do? Okay, We've com we will now compare step number one with the previous month's bank recon. Why is that? Why do you think we're going to do that? We're going to do that in order to identify items that were outstanding last month and now these items have gone through okay 
So that's the reason why we're, what we're going to do with when we are comparing with the previous month's bank reconciliation statement. Then, compare your cash receipts journal against the credit side of the bank statement. Why is that? Because the relationship between you and your bank is one of debtor and creditor. Put very simply, when we have money in the bank, we are saying that our books record a debit balance indicating an asset, indicating that we have money in the bank. Let's change that perspective. From the bank side, what will the bank say? The bank will say, we are owing money to ABC traders. So can you see the relationship? That of debtor and creditor? So obviously, a debit in our books would be reflected as a credit in the books of the bank. So therefore, compare your cash receipts journal with the credit side of the bank statement. What we will also do is we will compare the cash payments journal with the debit side of the bank statement. And in so doing, you will find that you will now be able to, you will also have to, I need to move this one slightly up. Oh, okay. Gosh. Let's see what happens here. Use your little finger. Use your I finger. Think so. Let's oh wait. go for it. Does oh wait, what about the little bar there? Which one? This on one. On the left. Ah. There's it. Made it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Got it. So guys, the finger works sometimes, eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sometimes we also have to compare the salaries journal with what? With the bank statement. And why does that happen? Remember, when you have issued checks to pay salaries, those are appearing as individual checks in your salaries journal. And therefore, you need to compare your salaries journal against the bank statement as well. Okay, guys? So that's the procedure around the bank reconciliation statement. Now, what does my bank reconciliation statement look like? And what is most important is to remember that your bank reconciliation statement, grade 12s, listen carefully. Right now, I need your full attention, your mind, your body, and your soul to be listening to what I'm saying. Your bank reconciliation statement is an extension of your bank statement. In other words, what would happen if these transactions were processed? What impact would they have had on my bank statement? That's exactly what I'm going to do when I draw up my bank reconciliation statement. Watch. You start off with either a debit or a credit balance as per your bank statement, now remember this, it's important. Which balance in your bank statement? Obviously, if this is an extension of my bank statement, I would start with the last balance. That is, the closing balance in my bank statement would be the opening balance of my bank reconciliation statement. Got that? Great. Then, all those checks that are outstanding, what do we mean by an outstanding check? An outstanding check is a check that we have written out, and because we've given it to Mr. Cheese, or Miss Cheese, Miss Cheese, who or doesn't, Mrs. Cheese. or Mrs. Cheese, <laughs> who doesn't need the money, so what do they do? They just keep it away. In our books, we've entered the check. Does the bank know that we've written out a check? Certainly not. So when will they find out? When that check is presented for payment. Until such time, that check needs to appear in my bank reconciliation statement as an outstanding check. Meaning what? Meaning that this check has not been presented for payment. Got that? Brilliant. 
The next item that we'll be looking at is the outstanding deposit. Now, a question should be posed at this stage. Why would there be an outstanding deposit? Shouldn't all the deposits be shown on my bank statement? Okay, guys, think of, let, me, let me paint a picture for you. Let me create a scenario for you. You have received your bank statement on the 25th of the month. What about the deposit that you have made on the 26th, the 27th, and the other days to month end? Surely those deposits cannot appear on your bank statement because you have it in your possession already. So therefore, these deposits would now be entered into next month. They would feature on the bank statement. But for now, they would be reflected on my bank reconciliation statement. Okay, errors made by the bank. May sound far-fetched, but definitely can happen. And how does this happen? Okay. Let's look at an example here. Let's assume that my account number is 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? And somebody, perchance, in haste maybe, on their deposit slip, indicates the account number 1, 2, 3, 4 on their deposit. What's going to happen? that money is now going to be shown as an amount in my bank account. No fault of the bank. Obviously, the opposite party had made an error. But in terms of us and our bank, this is deemed to be an error made by the bank. And therefore, this type of error will be corrected in my bank reconciliation statement. Okay. We will also then do the corrections in the following manner. Either debit and incorrect credit, or we will credit and incorrect debit. So this, grade 12s, would then bring you to the end of your bank reconciliation statement, and then you will end off with either a debit or a credit balance as per your bank account. And when this balance balances your bank reconciliation statement, voila, a feeling, of, a great feeling when those two balances agree. So I'm going to say agree with big numbers, hey? Exactly. You want yeah. big numbers. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break. Uh, guys, I hope that you are learning and enjoying as much as I am. Um, make sure that you tell all of your grade 12 friends that we are live now. This is new. You asked for it. Here it is. This Facebook page is far too quiet for my liking. So when we get back, I hope to see more of you here. Hi guys and welcome back. We are having so much fun here in the studio. Grade 12 accounting, you guys all better be tuning in. You asked for it, so now it's here. So now you have to watch. I just want to let you guys know that we need help from you guys. Please, can you ask any of your teachers, tell your teachers, tell your parents, we need content, especially physical science content. And what they can do is they can email us on content at mindset.co.za. I will post on the page so you can show your parents on your cell phone or on your PC or however you interact with us. Talk to us on Facebook, guys. If there's anything you need, post on our page and we will help you. Hey, Ashra? Sure, definitely. Exactly. The more questions, the better. The better, definitely. We want to know what they want us to do, isn't it? Because exactly. Because we need to know what they don't understand. They must use so us. Absolutely. We are at their service now. We are their personal teachers coming straight to the lounge. Exactly. I mean, we're coming right through to you. So if you have a question, post it on Facebook, guys, and we will answer it. Fantastic. Thanks, Indiana. <laughs> oh, right. Guys, remember, we are busy with the bank reconciliation statement and... Now, very often, a very neglected component of uh, the accounting curriculum, Indiana, what happens is people teach the content 
And they think that this part of it, the, the audits and the control, should be taught as a separate item somewhere at the end of the year. No. Understand that internal auditing, internal control is an integral part of accounting. And what we are saying, guys, is that any section of the work that you do would lend itself to what? To internal auditing, to ethics, to, to control measures. And let's see what we mean by that. By that we are saying that, remember, management is responsible for, Im for implementing. What are they responsible for implementing? They are implementing and establishing an effect control and auditing process remember when it comes to moolah when it comes to cash guys you need to look after that asset because the nature of the asset is, is such that it can lead to fraud mm. and therefore it's important now when we say accounting is a life skill it doesn't matter in which profession you go to. At the end of the day, you need to know how to do your bank reconciliation statement. Whether you're a professor, whether you're a doctor, whether you're an engineer. You're going to know, you're going to learn, or you will want to control your own finances. And that is why we say accounting is such an important subject that it, it, it enhances your ability to be able to control your own finances. Mm, and also those future entrepreneurs out there, Absolutely, guys, 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 you guys that want to start your own businesses, you best be watching. Definitely. So guys, it's not only for the gray suit and the black tie accountants out there, it is for all of us. And that is why we say, be with us on Mindset because we're going to make a difference to your life. I think that even if you're not in grade 12, or you should, uh, everyone should actually be watching. Exactly. If I was at home, I would be watching. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm finished high school. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we, what we're saying is that to, the, to other people, university students out there doing other degrees, listen to us. Watch us here. I'm sure you'll pick up a little bit, which will be of assistance to you. Ashraf is wise. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Indiana. Okay. <laughs> What does this process entail? What's the reason behind what we are doing? This is it, guys. To safeguard the assets of a business. In this case, cash. So that is the purpose behind your preparation of your bank reconciliation statement. Now, do you see how it fits in with internal auditing? Because the internal auditor needs to check and verify that these checks have in fact been written out to the correct people. Okay. So, how do we control the cash? Do you think in any business that the money is just put in and that's the end of the story? No, guys. All incomes that are received must be properly recorded. So that doesn't mean that you can just go into the cash register and take money out of there. No, it doesn't work that way. What needs to happen? All your accounting records must be accurate and reliable. That's it. You need to ensure that part of this process of internal control is that your accounting records are reliable and accurate. All expenditure must be authorized and entered. Does this mean that the person in charge just goes out and buys nilly-willy? Just buys at random? Certainly not. There needs to be authorization. Another very, very a critical factor is division of duties. Indiana... This is so important that you would find that this particular aspect, neglect of it, leads to fraud. Let me give you an example. The person that's receiving the cash, if that same person receives it and banks it, what happens? There's nobody checking on him or her. 
Can you see what happens, guys? Mm. But if Indiana receives the money, receives it, and I go and deposit it, then what do we call that? Division of duties. So we serve as a check against one another. And that is so important in terms of internal control, in terms of how we run our businesses. So like you correctly said, budding entrepreneurs, watch us on Mindset because we're going to help you. It's, amaz uh, it's amazing. As, a, as I think I like to see myself as a budding entrepreneur. So um, Ashraf, you're going to be helping me immensely, I can tell. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> Guys, proper documentation and authorization. What do we mean by that? For every transaction, the origin or the start of that transaction is what? The documentation. You do not process any entry without proper documentation. And when we're talking about documentation, guys, I'm sure you remember what you did in grade 8 and grade 9. Your source documents, namely your receipts, your check counterfoils, your invoices, and also your supporting documents. All of that falls into the package which we called documentation and authorization. So now, guys, let us see if we can go into an actual question and see if we can complete this here. Let's get down this one here. Okay. The question says, it's not working. Where is it going to? Ah, uh, there. Okay. I think he's found it. I found Back it. Back to Ashraf. <laughs> <laughs> right. You are provided with information relating to Craven B traders. The question says, refer to the information and ask yourself that what is, what is going on here? Let's get this here so we can clearly see what is happening. If we go into information B, there it is. A deposit of 40,000 dated the 2nd of April, does not appear on any bank statement, right? This money cannot be traced. 40,000 bucks, guys, gone. And the cashier, uh, are we going to say his name or her name? Let's see. Him. His name. Let's say him. Okay. Come, let's make his, up the boy's fault. His name <laughs> is Mr. Magician. Ah. Why? Because you will notice he has disappeared. disappeared. Okay, guys? Right. The question says, let's find the question. Well, Ashraf, are you find have you found the question? I found the oh, question, okay. right? Which GARP principle will the bookkeeper apply in this case? What does the bookkeeper want to do? The bookkeeper wants to write off the amount of 40,000. Okay? And... The question wants to know from you, which GAR principle will the bookkeeper apply in this case and briefly explain this principle. Now, this is important, guys. In accounting, we have various GAR principles that we have to learn. Now, notice, once again, the integration in accounting one would think that the GAP principles would be asked somewhere in the balance sheet or the income statement, but no, it appears here under the bank recon. So guys, which GAP principle will the bookkeeper apply in this case here? Definitely 
the bookkeeper will apply the principle of prudence. Indiana, you've heard of prudence? I've never heard of prudence. Have you met prudence? I've never met. I've oh. met a prudence. <laughs> yes. I've met a prudence. Yes. <laughs> and uh, on the lighter side, uh, in one of the exams that were marked somewhere in South Africa, uh, the question was asked about the prudence concept. And this learner was, prudence was a lovely girl in our class. <laughs> okay? I love that answer. <laughs> now that's thinking creatively that's creative. when you don't know that's the answer. That's thinking out of the box. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but guys, in accounting terms, that's not what we're looking for. So what is the prudence concept? The prudence concept is where we are conservative in our operations. In other words, what are we saying? We are saying that, yes, we will write off the 40,000 rand. Why? Because the possibility of recouping the 40,000 rand looks very bleak at this stage. So there's a possibility that we will not get this money back. So what do we do, guys? We write it off because the prudence concept says that we should be conservative in our approach. What does the prudence, sorry, <coughs> what does the prudence concept actually tell us in accounting? It tells us that we should anticipate future losses, but do not anticipate future gains. Now remember, the prudence concept is something that you have applied many a times in your accounting work. Where is that? Can you think of ideas? Can you think of solutions? If I ask you, where else was the prudence concept being applied in your accounting? Then certainly you should be telling me. Provision for bad debts. Why? You're making a provision for debtors that may not pay you. So that is the prudence concept in operation. So now, the bookkeeper wants to prevent this type of scenario taking place in the future. But before we go there, the question also said, briefly explain this principle. Meaning, one was the identification process. We identified the prudence concept. So explain, what do we mean? Like I said earlier on, like I alluded to, I said, remember, the prudence concept is there to ensure that we take into consideration any future losses in our business. So that means, coming back to our scenario, because the, book, because the cashier has disappeared, there's no possibility at this stage of us recouping this money. So what do we do? We write it off. Yes, it's a loss, but rather anticipate the loss than hoping that we will receive this money in the future for which there is no guarantee. So grade 12s, and we're going to change it now, and the budding entrepreneurs out there, remember, to know your accounting concepts, your GAP principles that could be applicable in all other situations other than the income statement and the balance sheet. Okay, Indiana. Over to you. Oh, fantastic. Is it time for a break already? I think so. Oh, gosh. Okay, guys, there are a few questions on the page. I will be going over them with Ashraf in the break. If you have any more, please post them on our page so when we get back, we can pick and choose and perhaps have some of those burning questions answered. See you now after the break. Hi guys and welcome back. We're going into the last 15 minutes of our show. I can't believe how fast it has gone. Um, Ashraf's just going to finish the question we're on and then it's time for some questions. Hope Beloya says, Hello Ashraf and Indy, I'm tuning in for extra accounting. Hello! Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Guys, watch the question. It says there, the bookkeeper wants to prevent a problem of this nature in the future. So provide two solutions to improve internal control in this regard. Now, obviously, 
This alludes to what we had done earlier. Remember we spoke about internal control? Remember I told you the importance of internal control? So obviously, we need to do what? Division of duties would prevent an incident of this nature. What else would there be? Make sure that your cash is deposited intact daily. Right? And there are a host of other things that can be done. So what we would refer you to is make sure that you go through your LTSM that you have with you. Make, th make sure that you go through our web notes. Am I right, Indy? Mm. You will find on our web notes, you will see. Here the question only asks for two uh, solutions. But you will notice in our web notes, we'll give you much, much more information. So guys, the place to be is mindset. So true. Okay, so can we go over questions yes, now? Yes, certainly. Before we do that, guys, the website is www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn forward slash extra forward slash live. If you go there, you can get our complete schedules as well as download all of the notes before you ev before the show even starts. You can download those notes and follow along. And then in two days or three days' time, this exact lesson will be then posted onto our YouTube channel. So we've given you so many touch points to get our content. Please use it. It really is going to help. Okay, let's start with question number one. Okay, Indy. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay, <laughs> ready. <laughs> Hope Beloy has said, I would like to know, how do I determine the opening balance when I've been given the bank reconciliation for last month and the transactions of the bank and cash books? So in other words, you want to determine the opening balance of what, Indy? Let me just hear that again. Okay, let me just look at it again. Give me two seconds. I'd like to know how to determine the opening balance when I've been given the bank reconciliation for last month and the transactions of the bank and cash books. Okay, so now... This means the following. Let's, let's use this here as an example. You're going to commence in your bank reconciliation statement, right, with your debit or your credit balance with either a debit or a credit balance as per your bank statement. Okay, now what you need to determine is that Sometimes you would find that this figure is an unknown. So in terms of my debit and credit, what do I find? I find that I have to insert all other information. What am I saying? I'm saying put in your outstanding checks. Put in your outstanding checks. Okay? Put in your outstanding deposits. Once you have done that, put in your errors. There may be an error that was made by the bank. Include the error. Right? Once you've got all that stuff in there, guys, remember, you now have to add your debits, add your credits. Obviously, we're working here with a hypothetical sense where we're just going to use crosses to indicate. So we got debit outstanding checks. We got credit outstanding deposits. We got a debit error. And remember, now, you need to determine that these two columns need to have the same total. In other words, once they have the same totals, you will now be able to find out what is your missing balance as per your bank account. So that's the way you're going to calculate your missing balance as per your bank account. And perchance, if the bank account balance is given, if your bank account balance is given, it may be possible that this is your unknown balance. And basically, guys, you're adding one column, you're adding another column, and the difference between the two columns would give you your missing figure. I hope I've answered your question. Okay, fantastic. Next question. There's uh -huh. a few more. Let's see how many we can get through. We've got 11 minutes, and I think okay we can do dokes. it. This one's from Chafiqua, and Chafiqua asks, what do you do with post-dated checks at the end of a financial accounting period? 
Okay, guys, watch this carefully. When you're dealing with your post data checks at the end of the financial year, what do we do with them? Right, let's identify this here. Remember that a post dated check, which we often refer to as a PDC. What is a PDC? It is a check that is dated for a future date. Now, we've if you have issued a post-dated check, this means that if I write out a check now to Indiana, for and a million I can rand. see her eyes glittering, but I date it for the 1st of July, 2013. Until that stage, there's nothing that you can do with that check. Why? It's post-dated for a future date. Let's look at the accounting treatment in terms of your question, in terms of financial statements. So in reality, in reality, look at this here. Here's my bank account, right? And the check has been issued to a creditor notice that when I issued the check, I credited my bank with 500 rand and I debited my creditors control with 500 rand. Okay, so this is the entry that I put through when the check was issued. Now guys, can this check be cashed? Certainly not. In other words, in terms of my reporting, I need to do something. I need to reverse the entry. And what will I do? This is what I'm going to do. I'm now going to debit my bank. So debit the bank account and credit my creditor's control. The question arises that why am I doing this? Like I explained to you earlier, this check cannot be presented for payment. So in other words, this 500 rand year that we have in our bank account has in fact not left our bank account as yet. Remember, our records are showing that the money is out of our bank account. But truly, that money has not left our bank account. And therefore, it becomes necessary now to put through this entry. And what is the entry? Debit bank, credit my creditors control. So in other words, when you are reporting now in your financial statement, remember that if, now this is a catch 22, watch this one closely. If my bank is favorable, then I would Add it to my cash and equivalents. But if my bank is unfavorable, be careful, guys. If my bank is unfavorable, then I will subtract it from my bank overdraft. Remember this, very, very important. Let me recap so that we clearly understand this concept. If my bank is favorable, I would add it to my bank, which is my cash and cash equivalents. And if my bank is in overdraft, I will subtract it from my overdraft. Why is that? Let me give you an explanation for this here so you can see exactly what I mean. Here's my bank account. If it has a favorable bank balance, of a thousand rand and I enter this check now worth 500 rand can you see what has happened to my bank it has increased to 1500 okay but if my bank account is in overdraft in other words I owe the bank 2000 rand watch when I debit my bank 
with the 500, what has in fact happened? I have reduced my overdraft to 1,500. So guys, once again, what do I do with post-data checks at the end of the financial year? Post-data checks that we have issued, I debit bank and credit my creditors control. Over Fan to you, Indy. Fantastic. Let me have a look and see if there's any other questions. Guys, I know a whole bunch of you have posted questions, but as Ashraf was going along, I realized that he was actually answering a whole bunch of them. Um, Maureen says you should do an hour. You should add an hour, please. Can you imagine a two-hour accounting show? <laughs> hey? <laughs> okay. I imagine. I think we should. Okay. <laughs> we've got five minutes left. KB wants to know, how do we treat stale checks in our cash books? Oh, brilliant question. Yeah, that's from KB. KB. Yes. Okay, KB. Here's your answer, my darling. Very simple. Let us first, de let us first define a stale check. Remember, when we talk about a stale check, what are we referring to? A stale check is a check that is older than six months. Now, what do I mean by that? If a check, you have a check in your possession, there's the check, and it's dated, uh, we're in January now, so let's go back and say it's dated uh, June 2012. Okay, so now watch this. June, July, August, September, October, November is already six months have passed. And I don't know whether this check was given to Indy or not, but it surely means that this check has not been presented for payment. So guys, this check is no longer negotiable. This check has now become stale. Right. This check, when it was originally written out, check number 001, when it was originally written out, when, it, when we originally issued this check, we entered this check where? Into our cash payments journal. That's right. So now, we have to cancel this check. And where are we going to cancel this check? We are going to cancel this check in our cash receipts journal. Okay, that's what we need there. Right. So what are we going to do? We're going to cancel this check in our cash receipts journal. So you can clearly see that you got to identify what was the detail of that check. And if that check was given as a donation and the, the organization or the, we, whoever the check was given to has disbanded and the check has not been cashed. In other words, we need to reverse that particular transaction. So number one, cancel the check in your cash receipts journal. But there's another curveball that can be thrown at you in the exams. Be careful. If the check is stale because, it, because India has lost the check, we still owe Indy the money, don't we? So therefore, watch the procedure now. Cancel the original check, number 001, in your cash receipts journal, but also send Indy a replacement check. Why? Because the original check is stale. She cannot use it anymore. So now what do we do? We write out another check. Check number 100. Okay, for the same amount, and then this ent is entered now into my cash payments journal. Remember, guys, this is the replacement check, and then, and then, this is where learners often make the mistake. This check must also be entered into my bank reconciliation statement as what? As an outstanding check. So that's the way we deal with the stale check. <sighs> okay, sure, fantastic. Indeed. We've got one minute left. I think I literally had 
one little question to ask you. Sure. Don't leave. Hold okay. on. All right. Um, hold on. Where is it? No. Okay. Where? This is from Maureen. Maureen asks, where do I put unfavorable balance on the BRS, um, dir um, DR or CR? Right. Unfavorable bank balance as per the bank, meaning it's a debit balance. It would appear in the debit column of your bank reconciliation Fan statement. Fa fantastic, okay, and, and Kati actually helped Maureen on the Facebook page, and that's why I wanna say thank you so much, Mindsetters. It's only a yeah. pleasure. And thank you so much for helping us today. Only Everyone has so loved the show. And remember, what does Ashraf always say? Guys, aim for the moon, because if you don't get there, definitely you're going to be one of Ashraf's shining stars, an accounting star. I love Until that, Ashraf. Time. Thank you. Until <laughs> next time, guys, same time, same place. I'm sorry it can't be two, but it's only one, but there's always next Thursday. Don't forget that Business Studies is next, grade 12s. See you then, and see you guys from accounting next week. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.